Hi, we want to welcome you today to Hungry Gin, a party album release uh, interview, whatever you want to call it. But today we're celebrating because we released, finally released our uh, Race to Deliver album, live worship recorded album, and uh, we are very excited for it. Uh, it's coming out today or came out today. Um, so um, today we want to kind of get to know the people that were involved. Uh, and talk a little bit about the album and get you excited. Make sure you download your copy uh, on Spotify, on iTunes, on Google Play, and every major platform. We are, we are there. Uh, YouTube, uh, you can listen to it and uh, enjoy and um, really um, get into the presence of God. So um, let's get started. My name is uh, Pastor Ilya, and I oversee a worship department, a worship umbrella here at the church. We have Malachi, uh, Adrian, and Alexandra, uh, these are our worship leaders, and uh, they were a, a big part uh, of, of the project uh, and uh, put things together. And today, uh, I want to I want you guys to get to know them a little bit, ask some questions, who they are, where they're coming from, and and, and some of their favorite things, and then we'll dive into discussing uh, this album that just got released and uh, get you super excited for it and. Make sure you download your copy. Anyways, uh, Malachi, let's start with you. Um, let's start by telling us when when did you first come uh, or when did you first received Christ into your life? When was the moment in your life uh, that you realized that you need Jesus in your life and it was a true moment of surrender? Uh, that would be in my early 20s. It was actually a, quite, a, quite a long process, but about 22. Um, it was when I really just turned everything over and just really wanted to live my life for Christ. So that would be it for me. I just I just knew Jesus was the answer. I, I'd kind of just done everything else, but Jesus was the answer at that time. And so I stuck with him ever since. Uh, so were you involved in music or, or uh, before getting to know, uh, before giving your life to Jesus and, and afterwards, how was, what's your music background? Yeah, so in a nutshell, um, through high school, I uh, actually, towards the end of high school, I started getting into music about junior year and um, then got uh, an offer to move to L.A. Um, to sign on a recording label in L.A. And uh, I was just under 18, so my parents said no. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Fortunately it's, for us. Yeah, yeah. I remember concerts in high school where you were performing. Oh, man. I thought you were a super cool kid oh, and man. I'm here like this. Oh. Uh, fall right fresh off the boat, you know, <laughs> like, oh man, this guy, I wish, and today we're, we're, we're serving together, we're in one yeah. church, and uh, uh, it was, uh, yeah, I did, yeah. I remember in, um, in uh, Richland High, yeah, when you guys were doing uh, rap battles with, what's yeah. his name, um, with Jason, with Bear and Jason, yeah, yeah. Syllables. Yeah. yeah, I was with a rap group, and so we would do very, very non-Christian songs, but, uh, <laughs> yes, but, I remember that, but, but glory to God, that's where I saw the light is because I, you know, when, when you're in the dark, you turn on the light and you can see it right away. But you know, that I recall now, I remember, uh, I was uh, listening and watching you guys perform and I was like, man, it's such a cool group of kids. I was like, you know, one day, one day we'll have these kind of people in our church and, yeah. and lo and behold, <laughs> <laughs> 10 years later, uh, yeah. you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah that's awesome. And yeah, yes. so, so that happened. And then after that. Um, I planted myself in the church and then, uh, just, I became a, a bass player, a guitar player, um, a piano player for a little bit. And then I stopped at the drums, went semi-professional in drums and started touring, um, as a drummer, singer and songwriter. So I played the drums and sang and, and, uh, at the same time, which was really, really interesting. And, uh, then after that, um, I, I, uh, came here. And then and began the, began the journey here. So that's kind of a quick scope of, of everything musically. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, obviously, you know, there's a lot more. And uh, but when when how long ago did you uh, came to Hunger Jam? How long have you been a part of it now? So I've been here about four years uh, as of last month. So super excited. I remember actually the time where you and I spoke. It was it was at the the raise to deliver in uh, at the the Coliseum at the. No, not the Coliseum. Uh, and so that's that's when we kind of really, huh? yeah, we we officiated everything, and and uh, I was really wanting to just to just be here and and really just move everything in my life uh, aside because I had kind of built up 
uh, like side gigs and had a bunch of like other like artists wanting to come up that I was helping out and, and by creating this thing called the Malachi Experience where we did, you know, like uh, just like private, like larger scale company weddings and, or companies and weddings, that kind of stuff. And so as I build that up, I, I was I really wanted to actually to give that give that up because I, uh, my heart was to to do worship. Um, so yeah, that that was that was pretty cool. But that's that's kind of yeah. So four years, that's yeah, awesome. Four years. So now a few uh, kind of questions to get people to know you a little bit. So, what's your favorite worship band outside of Hunger Jam? Uh, so my favorite worship band um, is besides Elevation uh, is going to be. Um, I have two favorites. I have to pick one. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's just right now, it has to be, for me, uh, Elevation, because they're so dynamic, and nice, you don't nice. know what they're going to come out with next. Yes, they're rocking it, for sure. So, next question, what's your all-time favorite worship song? My all-time favorite worship song, um, and the one that comes to mind, is um, actually from uh, Marcos Brunet, and um, it's in Spanish. Um, off his, uh, it's like Tu Corazon or something like that album. Anyways, um, so it's, yeah, it's a Spanish song that I, I awesome. heard about like eight years ago. Nice. What's really the name of it, you know? Um, it's always when you when you get asked this question, it's always when you get asked, you know, the name <laughs> that you forget. It goes away, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the next question then, what's the song that you got on repeat right now? Right now that song is called... Um, it's from Oasis, uh, Oasis Ministry in the Dominican Republic, and that song is Algo Está Pasando. Nice. Yes. Um, Spanish or Portuguese? That's Spanish. Spanish. Yes. Nice. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Well, uh, we thank God that he uh, brought you to Hungry Gen Ministries, and now uh, you're a, a, a lead uh, worship um, pastor, overseer of... of uh, of Hunger Gen Worship, and uh, from the time we came on board, we have uh, done a lot of projects together, and a lot of great things in, came up, and I know it's only the beginning, and the best is yet to come, and I think this album that's coming up is is a, is a next step, uh, which we'll hear, discuss here in a little bit after we get to know Adrian and Alexander. So Adrian, your, your, your turn. Um, well, let's start off when you give your life to Christ. When was that moment in your life where you, where you decided, you know what, uh, enough is enough living for myself. I want to give everything to God and follow Him and uh, give your life to Christ. Yeah, so I was born and raised in church, but I think the, the moment really came was a, a little, just a little over four years ago, actually, and it was at um, Race to Deliver conference at the track. And oh, the track. Yeah, yeah. yeah with, with Wiseman uh, Harry. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, Apostle John Chi, the first one. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Four, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that was 2016. Um, I was in a really just really rough spot in life and you know I had all these dreams and goals and the, really I knew I knew that I had a call in my life uh, from God and it was just a matter of you know all right God well what's the next step because things are not going well where I'm at where I'm at and so um, it was at that conference that you know I just had a an amazing encounter with God and Literally that whole weekend um, was would provide the next step in in my life, which would be to you know uh, come over here to Tri Cities. Didn't you come to internship first? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So it was a way to get involved in the gym <laughs> worship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way, internship is coming up uh, this summer with your team, so you better sign up. Uh, and if you want to be involved. And uh, if you want to be in and learn ministry, like the, the back end of the stuff that we do here, School of Ministry in the fall, highly, highly, highly encourage you to sign up. Uh, you get to meet every single one of us here and get to work with us, go through the processes that we go through writing songs, right? Uh, learn how to lead, even learning some studio stuff that we do and just being involved literally in, in everything that we do here. And that's in the fall in School of Ministry. Uh, don't miss the opportunity to sign up. Spots are getting filled up quick we only have limited capacity at this point so anyways but this is where Adrian started yeah it was um, it was that weekend um, I'll never forget that the first thing that Apostle John John Chi said when he was up there on that on the on the podium he said may God bring you fresh revelation instruction and direction 
And that was exactly what a, a month before when I signed up, you know, I was praying to God and that those are the three things that I prayed for. And so next thing you know, uh, by the end of the weekend, I had, uh, it was actually after the last day, I had a conversation with Bryson and Malachi outside of Olive Garden after the conference. And uh, they were Olive like, Garden is a good place to have deep conversation. Mom had, a, had an encounter, another encounter there. <laughs> and so, you know, they talked to me and they said, hey man, you know, this is for you. And, you know, next thing you know, so what is it four years now for uh next month it'll be four years awesome precise. awesome that's awesome so now uh what's your favorite band outside of hg worship i know hg worship is your favorite band. oh yes yes just outside of it i breathe hg worship no, I'm just kidding. um i would say uh right now it would be barack uh hispanic uh band from dominican republic awesome so what's your old time favorite worship song how far how far back do we go uh we go we're gonna go back a, a ways um for me it has to be heart of worship by matt redmond that that song that's is, long time. is yeah that's the one <laughs> so the last question on that and um uh, what is what what is the song that you have now on repeat it's a worship song it's another <laughs> it's another old school one it's a it's by Hillsong and it's called Made Me Glad and it's with uh, back in the Darling Check days. I like that song. Yes, okay. So, Alexandra, your turn. Alexandra, you've been with us probably the longest. Uh, it's been, what is it, 12? 11 years. 11 years, okay. Uh, you came here as just turning a teenager, right? Tell us about it and when did you encounter Christ? Uh, how's the experience when you give your life to Christ and of course everything that follows yes um, so yeah I've been here for 11 years so now a little over a decade I can't believe it um, yeah time flies time by flies. <laughs> and yeah I was uh, I just, had just turned 15 years old so my parents actually came from a Catholic background and I was baptized in the Catholic Church when I was a baby and um, and then throughout my childhood, I was kind of like in and out of Christian churches. And then um, when I reached my freshman year of high school, I actually, because of all the things I had gone through in my childhood, I was like, I'm done with God. I don't want anything to do with Christianity anymore. And then my neighbor invited me to, when we used to have Sunday chill nights, and we would play volleyball here on your oh, day. Oh, yes, yes. We used to chill on Sunday nights. Yes. So I was a volleyball player, and I was like, oh, my gosh, yeah, I want to go play volleyball. And so that was like a little way to sneak me in here. And so they invited me to um, a youth service, and it's when we used to have them on Thursdays. And so I was really nervous to come back to church, but I felt like the Holy Spirit was like telling me I needed to come back and so I'm not even kidding like as soon as I got here and I entered the building I felt the Holy Spirit I was like trembling the entire service I felt like a uh, Vlad was like preaching to me like the sermon was for me and so that very happens night, a lot here yeah right <laughs> it always happens it's because it's it's a divine appointment right so <laughs> um so yeah, so that that same night I, I gave my life to to Jesus Christ. And, yeah. and so almost what practically shortly after that you've you've joined the joined the team, right. worship team. Yeah, so I joined the team and start earning your stripes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I joined the worship team about like three months after coming to, to Hungry Gen. And Hungry Gen, I mean, this is my home. This is where I will always be. And this is a place that has really molded me. You, Pastor Ilya, your wife, Mariana, Pastor Vlad, um, all the leaders here who have been here just as long as they're even longer since the beginning. You guys, you know, have really poured into me and helped me to become the leader that I am today in, in worship. And so it's such a privilege to still be here and now, you know, be on the other side where I have the honor to help other people and raise up other leaders as well, which is amazing to now uh, be on the other side. We were the young ones and now we're raising the next generation and the next generation is pouring into the next generation, which we see that. So uh, yeah, I'm just really happy that so here. So <laughs> yeah, we are, we're happy that you're, you're, you're here. 
uh, we're happy to have uh, to have your part uh, and for being so long and really um, starting out on the other side like you said uh, you know being trained being built being uh, uh, I mean you were always a talented singer that's something that the that you were gifted with but but that spiritual atmosphere and a character building that came through with the years and today you're on the other side being a part of the team that's helping to raise other generation. Um, one interesting fact about you is like, is that um, I actually first time I saw you before you even came to church through a video, you performing uh, performing jazz or perform it was a it was a wedding. So uh, something really cool about Alexander is that she sings jazz really really good and what is it uh, and classical classical opera. Oh yes, it's even better. Um, so, um, yeah, you guys can check out some of the YouTube clips from her early days, uh, some of the performances and the, and the, uh, the weddings in different places. You actually, you actually, what, you got a third place, right, in Washington State as an opera, right, or jazz? Yes, when I was, um, I believe, like 16 I w or 17, I had worked myself up to the, the third best uh, opera singer in the, in the state for my age bracket, I believe. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I studied music for many, many years, specifically classical music, jazz music, and the fundamentals of music in general. And that has really helped me to help benefit the, the team, so yeah. <laughs> so uh, what's your favorite worship band outside of Hungry Jam, of course? Um, yes, of course. Uh, my favorite one right now is Elevation. My husband and I listen to Elevation all the time, and I actually think it might be his favorite more than mine. But <laughs> in more ways than one, not just the music, but their whole production team is, is just amazing. And uh, and no, this is a part of the other question. You okay? The song I'm listening to right now, you guys need to go check it out. It's on their latest album, I believe. It's the last song. It's called um, "What Would You Do?" I think I don't know who that is who sings it, but. It is amazing. There's anointing all over that song, and it's been on repeat nonstop. So, all right, so you, you went ahead of me. Then you Sorry, tell I just us, had to jump over and let y'all know. Tell us, tell us the what's your all time favorite right now? Elevation, but all time favorite, a, a go to anytime you need to get into the presence of God, or something that you can just kind of anytime just go back. This is your go, not repeat, but go to kind of a, yeah. like a. Um, one of my favorite songs of all time that I just fell in love with from a very young age was, it's called De Creer En Ti by Jackie Velasquez. And I love that song to this day. That Is it whole a worship album, song? Huh? Is it even a worship song? I don't know if it's a worship song, but I feel the Lord well, I know when that song Velasquez comes is. on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I love that song. I actually... I'm old enough to know that. <laughs> yeah, no. Maybe some of the younger kids don't know who she is. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Um, but yeah, that, that song is... I love that song I used so to rock the dress in class with secret. <laughs> 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 I know. Not a secret. Just kidding, just kidding. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, Malachi, thank you, Alexander. Let's talk about album. So we are we are excited. Today is the release date of, of our uh, Race to Deliver album, which we've been working for some time on it. We've been planning for it for some time. But About a year? A little huh? over a year? A little yeah. over a year? Yes, yes. And um, and finally, finally, it's it's here. Tell us all about it. Uh, what's this about? What's this album? What's the, what are we trying to accomplish? What are we trying to achieve with this album? Awesome. To give credit where credit's due first, that song is Toma Tu Lugar. That's, that's my throwback from... Uh, Marcos Brunette. So to the EP, you tell us, tell us what it's about. It is our first live that we've ever done. So up to this point, we've released about 20, like mid, like I think 20, I think it's 28 songs total um, on the Hungry Jam platform uh, for, for worship and music. So this is the first time we've ever done live. And the whole thing behind it, the be very beginning, a little over a year ago was hey, we really want um, people to experience like they're here. And we believe that every every house has their sound. Every house has that that thing. And so ours is very, very much, I mean, it's more than just like you just feel the presence of God. Like you're, you feel energy. There is a there is a, a fire. I mean, you, you're feeling something during worship. And uh, in our praise is very uh, exciting. 
Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, bring tennis shoes and sweats and a, and a, he and a headband. Um, because, I mean, when we enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise, it's all out. So we were like, okay, so why don't we do a live one? And we started talking, you know, here and there amongst each other about what do you think about it? We recorded uh, Race to Deliver, one of them, and then another Race to Deliver, we recorded again. So we we had the first one, some of the files got corrupted, and the music that we were working on for months, maybe six months or so at a time, just completely got wiped out. And so we were like, oh, man, what are we going to do? The only one that was left was Come Holy Spirit, which uh, is the one Alexandra's leading. And uh, so, which is from a race to deliver. So the uh, whole idea was behind it. So thank, thank God that we had another race to deliver. <laughs> but we recorded we two of them a year. Yeah, so we yeah. Got two shots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, so we we took the songs that really thought as in the, they're all covers, but really thought that like these songs also represent who who we are um, in our church and, and worship, being at our church and worshiping with us. So we took those songs and really thought that. The ones that are in there are the ones that best represent um, what it's going to be like as a listener or as a person coming to an actual service, what it's going to be like. The intensity, uh, the atmosphere, the feel of the song, um, everything in, in these songs really just kind of kind of enables what what we're about in, in worship. Yeah, this 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 worship album, I feel it's like a cocktail of many different things. Yeah. It's not. It's uh, we actually we need de debated like should we put some certain songs in? Usually, when you do an album, you kind of have a theme, a genre going through it. And uh, but we were such a diverse church, uh, yeah. and we have so many different cultures. And the thing is that we actually do that during service. Yeah. We do that during conferences. We try to really bring different flavors and different cultures. Uh, a different genres of, of uh, and so we, we we thought it would be a disservice if we just modified it and instead of just leaving it raw the way people experience uh, the atmosphere and, and uh, have that experience uh, during the conferences or during uh, you know regular Sunday services and so it really we just left it as is we in different genres different uh, styles uh, we even I think you have a uh, little bit of Spanish there There's a little bit of Spanish in there a little too, bit yeah. of Spanish in there just just how kind of how we are as a church so I think the album is very authentic uh, and really um, kind of that's who we are here at Hanbe Jen um, we, we love many different types of musics uh, from different walks of life and even, even different cultures and I think that's what makes this album is uh, unique interested uh, and um, uh, one of the songs actually is a Spanish song that was translated right can you tell us about it yeah the very first song uh, Viento Recio is the original name in English uh, is translated into Mighty Wind. So um, Josh Morales and um, uh, Miel San Marcos, they wrote that song, uh, and Luis Morales Jr. Um, they wrote that song, and uh, first time I heard it, uh, we were actually into Miel San Marcos already on their previous Proezas album, um, and we had done uh, some Jubilos before that, which were, um, remind me, uh, Los Muros Caerán, a fiesta, so it was based off of that, kind of coming from there. And then they, when they released Pentecostes, Pente Pentecostal, uh, and the, uh, we heard more jubilos, and we're like, and even even you know, I remember Pastor Vlad, Pastor Ilya was like, are are there more of those jubilos? Are there are there more? And we're like, yeah, let's do it. So we we got yeah we got more jubilos uh, coming in, and uh, all we needed to do was translate. So we sat down for. Maybe not even a month, maybe a couple, maybe a couple months, and uh, we started translating kind of here and there because some of the some of the words were a little bit different, phrases were difficult uh, from Spanish to English. Um, but then we had the band started practicing, and and these songs were really intense. All kudos to to uh, Miel San Marcos, uh, Chris Rocha for for making the talking about the all these guitars. And it's just yeah. insane. Um, so we ended up doing that. Uh, it, really through boot our, camp. It, it really pushed our, our, our musicians to really step up their game. Yeah, it was it was worship music boot camp. Yeah, it was. <laughs> no, we were sweating during, like, we weren't moving, but we were sweating. 
because there was just so much that was happening. I remember Frank one time, he's like, if, you, if, if I play one more song, my hand's going to fall off. Yeah, <laughs> just nonstop. Um, so, so moving on, we, we brought the Jubilos in and, um, and then, yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I, 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 I'm really excited. I think, um, we, we got some oldies on the song, some hymnal. Uh, Holy are you Lord. Holy are you Lord. Uh, yeah. We got Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, the yeah. Hallelujah. So I, I think yeah, this this album is just so diverse. We went from some from different cultures or different genres to some more contemporary stuff to mm -hmm. like throwing way back old school Benny yeah. Hinn, Benny Hinn style. Yeah. But I, I think it captures the, the spirit of Hunger Gen, the the diversity of Hunger Gen. Uh, it, it encompasses uh, kind of different cultures and different tastes and who we really are. We have, uh, last time I think we were discussing, somebody said we have 12 or 13 different nationalities in our church. And, Easily, uh, yeah. and a large portion of them uh, are Spanish speaking. And so, um, uh, so yeah, this, this album kind of contains it all. And uh, I'm really excited. There's, there's some good praise uh, and, and there's definitely worship where you can just, uh, Either listen and enjoy it, or or take it into your prayer closet, and put it on repeat, and just really soak in the presence of God and uh, feel His presence and get closer to Him. And I think that's what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, Adrian, uh, your favorite song on this album, and why? I would say um, probably the probably the Jubilo Medley. I think it's uh, the creativity musically that Mier San Marcos was, was, they just put it on display. It, it blew my mind. Um, they're fun songs, you know, there's, they're, they're a mix of like throwbacks, but it has this modern twist, this modern feel, you know, where they just, um, you just, you get that, that gospel, nice soul to it. But at the same time, like I said, with like a modern, like a modern twist. And so, um, to me, I would say definitely that the, the Hubi Domenli would be it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I had fun mixing it and 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 and, and trying to. There's so many things that are going on. Trying to make sure that that each part and each each, each lick of the guitar and it that it it, it was it was there. And sometimes you like, dude, man, I really like this one. Crank that one. Ah, oh, man, that one looks good too and sounds good too. So it was a lot of fun producing it and, and working together with with Adrian Malachi and the others though that that were in, involved in this project. So uh, yeah, I think. Musically wise, it's a whole different level uh, of anything that we we put up there. Alexandra, um, what is what is Hungry Gen Worship up to this year? What's in store? What should people expect? So we are really really excited to announce that we have two albums coming up: one in the summer and one in the fall, and it's going to be bilingual English and Spanish. So we are not only just going to reach out to the English speaking community, but also the Spanish speaking community. Our church has a ton of <laughs> Spanish speakers. Um, and also just as you, just as even like the secular industry, you can now see even in the Christian in Christian music, how Spanish is really starting to explode um, the Latin music. And yeah, so we're really excited for you guys to hear what we have in store. Um, what I, Summer. Uh -huh. What's uh, that's not our usual worship release. Right. What is it? Summer, aka summer jams. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we had a kind of a little bit of a different flair. It may not be like what you typically hear in worship that's not, music. That's not worship music. Just it's to not. be clear, it's it's more of a it's like more a, like a pop slash like R and B slash, slash yeah, right. So it kind of it's kind of cool. Soulish. Yeah. What else we got there Basically. cooking? Something, yeah. We'll probably add a little bit of Latin beats here and there, you know, something oh, like that. Oh, we got you. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it's kind of cool because we get to have an opportunity to put in our own individual ideas within the music while it's still being spirit-led, if that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so. This, the Summer Gems, um, if, if you haven't listened to our first Summer Gems release, which is uh, Let Them Say What They Want EP, uh, a lot of really cool, um, really cool songs. And not necessarily worship, but there's just a, a, a good, um, a good songs where you can just, what the reason why we call it Summer Gems is you can just kind of roll your window down, bump the music, really nice beats, good positive message uh, with, with, with a, 
uh, you know, good beats and, and you can just enjoy your time or maybe have it playing somewhere uh, at the coffee shop on the background or right. or or some uh, some gathering where it's not necessarily uh, a worship, but there is positive and Christian message behind it. And it just has a very modern pop R&B type of a feel. So yeah, it's I'm still, actually looking very forward to this one. Yeah, it's creating, you know, stuff for Christians and, and anyone else. Anyone can listen to it, not just Christians, okay? Um, and it's giving opportunity for people to listen to something maybe other than worship music, the usual Christian music that you may hear. And it's something that fits in with the times. But it's still, you know, it's, it's pure. It's from God. And so, yeah, so we're really excited for you guys to listen on what we've been working on. We really hope that you guys are blessed by it. Yes, yes, uh, definitely looking forward to it. So this year for Hungry Gen Worship is, is packed. We are working uh, toward uh, bringing uh, the worship experience that we have in the house to everybody out there that, that, that's following our ministry and wants to um, wants to enjoy that experience in their, in their iPod, in their, in their iPhone, or, or in, when they're working out or whatever. And so um, we have uh, great things. We have a Spanish, like she mentioned, we have a Spanish. Um, we're going to put a lot more emphasis on, on, on having Spanish songs, translating our songs that we produce, we write into Spanish uh, and release that as well. So uh, there's quite a few things cooking. We're excited. We're looking forward to it. Um, also, we have Race to Deliver coming up in Federal Way in, what is it, October, November? October, I think. Don't remember exactly the date, so um, you'll be hearing a lot of new stuff there, possibly even a, 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 a release of a second worship EP. Um, but we will we'll, uh, we'll see on that. But we're we're very excited um, with this album that's that's released uh, right now. We pray that uh, it will take you into the holies of holies, into God's presence. That it will uh, refresh you and it's renew uh, it, that it will renew you. The Bible says that uh, that in His presence, you know, we we get renewed. Uh, in His presence, uh, His presence lifts us up. It's kind of it's kind of like um, you know when you get in, into airplane, for example, and you begin to take off in the airplane. Most of you probably flown an airplane. You would relate to this one. And as the airplane begins to take off and, and climb the altitude. The things down below on the ground, they, 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 they shrink in size. Now, in reality, they don't shrink in size. They stay the same, but our, our, our perspective changes as we go higher. See, a worship is kind of like that plane. You may be going through different things in your life. You may be uh, maybe overwhelmed by, by especially this season where we're in with the quarantine. Maybe you're laid off and you're not working, struggling to provide for your family. Maybe you're struggling with depression, anxiety, loneliness, whatever it is. Uh, worship is, is a vehicle that can help you and can elevate you. It's not that the problems will disappear, but your, your, your mindset, your, uh, your perspective will change. Um, and it will help you to focus on the things that are most important, which is our relationship with God, enjoying ourselves in the presence of God, discovering who we are in the presence of God. And... Uh, and even if the life doesn't change, your attitude changes. And eventually, the Bible says, as our attitude changes, as our perspective changes, and our view changes, our life will change. God will help us get through the difficult times. God will set us free from the things that are tormenting or binding us. So I highly encourage you to use this album, uh, not just this album, but any worship album, to get into the presence of God. Because in His presence, uh, that's where we are restored, renewed. This is where our strength is renewed. And this is where we can find strength to move on one more day, strength to achieve our goals, dreams, and our vision. Amen. So we want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, again, our album is available right now on all major platforms, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Spotify, uh, YouTube, and everything else under the sun that there is. Most likely, we are there. So download uh, and, and enjoy it. Uh, we would love to hear your comments, meaning when you download or listen, go um, rate it, go leave comments. Um, that, that also helps the exposure, obviously. It costs you nothing, but it definitely helps us to keep going, knowing that people are enjoying it, listening, loving it. Uh, and the second thing is share with somebody. Send it to your friend. Uh, post the link up. Uh, 
let them know you're listening to this album. Say, hey, you know, post it on your story or whatever so that more people can enjoy this. And uh, anyways, thank you for watching and uh, be blessed.